Hey everyone, welcome back to my class. Um, we are still working on lesson three. Um, we're going to start talking about a couple guys, a couple dudes that were um, studying in different places. We've got Einar Hertzsprung. He's from Denmark and he was uh, graphing um, in, in one of his studies. And then we have another guy who is from the United States. Uh, his name was Henry Norris Russell. And he was also doing some graphing of the stars. Um, they weren't doing them at the same time, so these guys didn't know each other. Um, but they both um, ended up discovering that there was a pattern that was um, on this graph. And it was when they were plotting the surface temperatures of the stars on the x-axis of the graph and plotting absolute brightness on the y-axis. If you look over here, I've made a diagram. We've got the x-axis here which our variable is temperature on the bottom, because that's, that's what they were graphing on the x-axis was the surface temperatures. And then we've got the uh, absolute brightness on the y-axis. So if you've ever asked what are the variables of the graph, you always know that it's the two names of the x and y axes. Okay, well they ended up finding that um, there was a pattern between the, the findings of the temperatures, or surface temperatures and the absolute brightness. And they ended up calling this an HR diagram. Now, if you look on page 170, I'm sorry, 140 in your science books, you will find a picture of the HR diagram. And this is what it looks like. It is this pretty blue and white and yellow and red color. Um, and it, it shows the different areas where the, the stars are clustered. Um, they are basically by their absolute brightness and their temperature, just like it shows on the graph. I want you to take this picture right here, and I want you to cut that out, and I want you to put that into your IMB. Now, if you don't have any glue or scissors or anything like that, don't worry about it. You can do that when you get back to school. Um, if you do have scissors and you don't have glue, um, you might want to look up on the Internet and see if you can find out how to make glue from flour. That would be a great science experiment. Um, there's one last page um, in this lesson, and it is um, classifying stars and how to, to see how they change over time. And I'm just going to read this last bit to you, and I'm going to let you add notes into your IMVs the way that you would like to do that. <clears throat> Astronomers use HR diagrams to classify stars and to understand how stars change over time. As shown in figure three, most of the stars in the HR diagram form a diagonal area called the main sequence. I would guess you might want to put that in your notes. More than 90% of all stars, including the sun, are main sequence stars. Within the main sequence, the surface temperatures increase as absolute brightness increases. So as the temperature goes up, the absolute brightness goes up. Thus, hot bluish stars are located at the left of an HR diagram and cooler reddish stars are located at the right of the diagram. The brightest stars are located near the top of the HR diagram while the dimmest stars are located at the bottom. Giant and supergiant stars are very bright. They can be found near the top center and the right of the diagram. White dwarfs are hot but they're not very bright so they appear at either the bottom left or the bottom center of the diagram. You may want to go back and reread that on your own, or you can just replay this so you can listen to what to put into your notes. That ends our lesson three. You will find a quiz over the characteristics of stars, lesson three, on your Google Classroom. I will see you next time. Thanks.